Hey everybody, Whitney Labrie here. Have you ever been so inspired by a painting or a drawing that you saw, or maybe an illustration in a book that you wanted to take that off the page and maybe make a miniature room box out of it? Well, that's what I'm gonna do this week. And the painting I've chosen is this one. And the reason I'm inspired by it is because my mom painted it. Now the original artist on this painting is Susan Wheeler. And my mom was inspired by her and I've been inspired by my mom to make this room box. So mom, this one's for you. The main components that I'll be using to build the room box today will be one piece of foam board from the dollar store, which is now the dollar 25 store. And then I also have this little piece of wood here that I'm gonna be using as the flooring. And I bought this on clearance at the dollhouse shop and then also this bay window as well that had a little damage to it and I got that on clearance too. Those are gonna be my main three pieces. Now the wood has a little bit of a bow to it because it's been pretty dried out for some time it looks like. So I'm taking this cloth right here and I've added just a little bit of water and such a little bit amount, I mean, this cloth almost feels dry still. And I'm just gonna wash it down a little bit and that's gonna actually help expand that wood and hopefully get rid of the bowing on it. And then I'm just gonna take that piece of wood and use that to draw out my lines for my two sides because I'm just gonna do an open room box, a two-sided room box use my window as the basis of course for the cutout for the window then i'm just going to take my tacky glue and glue it all together and then you can see here that this will be the top part where the ceiling is going to be i'm just going to do a small sliver so that i can add a couple lights and basically that is what it will look like just a very simple and easy corner room box I'm gonna start by painting the interior of the room box. It looks like based on the painting that the base coat on the wall is just a vibrant yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint it a nice yellow. Now I'm just painting it straight from bottle to brush to wall and I'm not adding any water. I also don't wanna put too much paint on it because it'll be really absorbent and it will start to bow out really badly. <laughs> we will correct that later with trim. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the yellow. And then I'm taking an antique gold. It looks like she aged the walls by adding a little antique gold, so that's what I'm gonna do. It's kind of fun doing this. I'm gonna have to try to color match as much as possible, but the other fun thing about doing a room box based on a painting, it doesn't have to look super realistic, and you can do a more cartoonish look, which is really fun. So this is something different for me, and I'm really enjoying it. So once I have the antiquing on there, which uh, is just basically me doing some antique gold brush strokes, kind of aging it out, I'm gonna take a milk chocolate brown and it looks like there's some sort of little design on the wallpaper also. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding that design. So once everything is all nice and dried, I will go ahead and begin the lighting process. Now I just literally did the lighting tutorial video last week. So if you're interested in learning more about how to light a room box, I will put the link in the description of this video or you can click the link in the video. Since this looks like a little rabbit sweet shop, maybe it caters to a couple different types of woodland creatures, I am going to do the outside in a, in a scrapbook paper that looks like wood and go ahead and glue it in using my book binders glue here. And again, if you're interested in knowing more about wallpaper, I also have recently done a wallpaper video. So the base is a vertical shiplap wainscoting, which I'm gonna accomplish with some popsicle sticks. But I also wanted to show you here the bowing that has taken place on this room box. And this of course is a very common issue when you use foam board to build a box. Some of that is gonna correct itself automatically when I put this wainscoting in. So we'll do that first. Once that's all in place, I'm gonna start trimming out the edges and the top using a myriad of different types of trims that I purchased at the dollhouse shop. I wanna do, of course, a baseboard, a top trim to the wainscoting, and then we're gonna trim out the whole box itself. It's also gonna make this box a lot more sturdy. Now, one of the things you might notice is that I haven't wallpapered the top part of the room box. The reason is because the painting shows three lights, but I only had two, so I'm waiting I ordered a third one and I'm hoping that it comes in before the project, before I need to ship this project out to my mom for Mother's Day. All right, so for the trim, I'm gonna paint everything in a warm white, including the course that shiplap wainscoting. 
And then the flooring, if you look at the photo, it's a combination of brown creams and it kind of almost looks like milk chocolate or, or like chocolate milk. And so I am going to go ahead and paint that in a chocolate milk. And then once that first coat is dry, I'm gonna go back over it with some warm white and kind of smush in my paintbrush so that you can get those good, nice variations in color. And then once that is completely dried, I'm gonna go back over with my Sharpie and create those very obvious outlines in the tile to distinguish them because it looks like she painted the base probably and then went back over with it with a brown paint to create that look and so that's what we've got now that the flooring is done I'll go ahead and put in my all my trims next step is to work on that window so from the inside, it looks like it might be like a metal or a black and gray. So the easy step, of course, is just to do a base coat in black, except for the interior, which has a wood finish, right, in the actual window portion of it. And then I am going to do my best 90s style sponge painting of that gray all over that window to kind of give it some variation in color and make it a little bit more like a metal look. And then what I did was I took some plastic sheets here. These are clear acetate sheets, and that is what I use for the interior window. I just glued the, I cut them to size and glued them in. They make them in a couple of sizes. I already had in my stash, you know, smaller ones, so I did have to cut a couple pieces to make it fit, but they make, make these bigger. Then, I, of course, I did take my stain pen and I stained the interior, like that really dark oak color, and then I glued it in, and it's starting to kind of come together I feel like. Now at first when I started this room box I didn't really notice that this is a winter scene. There is some fogging going on in the window and you can see some snowflakes and everything so I want to go ahead and add some snow into those windows. In order to accomplish that look I take my white paint, white acrylic paint, and I dip my brush right into the water and I make it super watery and I'm just going to go one window at a time. So I just put a whole bunch of paint in the window, and then very quickly before it dries, I'm gonna take my paper towel and kind of smear it around to really fog up those windows and make it look like a nice winter window. And I'm just gonna go each window individually. I wanna add some snow into the window. So I'm taking my Mod Podge and some white paint and I'm mixing them together. And then I'm just going to take my paintbrush and fill in some of the corners where snow would maybe gather. Once I have the look that I'm going for as far as where I want all my snow, I'm gonna take my white sand and this is also the vase filler for floral and I got it at the dollar store, also the Dollar Tree actually. I think they have it at other dollar stores. And I'm just gonna spoon it on while my glue and paint mixture is still wet and fill in those corners so you have this really nice glue listening, looking snow, and then this is the outcome. And then here it is from the interior. And then offset, it looks like it says sweet shop. That was just hand done in the windows and it's a little offset. So with my pink Sharpie, I just wrote in sweet shop and try to mimic what I can see in the painting. All right, let's talk about furniture. So there are a few pieces in the room box that we're gonna be using. Now this piece here is a display cabinet for sweets or store. And if you're interested, I do have a few of these in different finishes on my eBay website. So what I did here was I added some blue tape because it's way easier than taking those shelves out and putting them back in, believe me. And then what I'm gonna do is paint it based on what I'm seeing there in that painting. So I'm gonna add some green and yellow to the interior. And then I'm gonna base coat the panels on the outside outside in a bright yellow and then I'm gonna go over them with the antique gold again so they kind of have the same look as the walls. There's a three-tiered shelf that sits up inside that window. So what I did to make that was I took these three acrylic lids that go to small acrylic boxes and if you've been collecting miniatures for any length of time you probably recognize what these are. And then what I did was I took this trim, cut it down, painted it black, and then glued it all together with super glue. There is a small round red table that's in the corner of the painting so I just bought this piece and then this stool here it's not actually in the painting but the rabbit that I have that goes behind the counter is a little small so I'm gonna actually just use this to give that height later on 
Making accessories is always fun and there's plenty in this painting to do. So the first one is that hanging basket in the back corner. I can't even begin to fathom making an actual like metal hanging basket, but I do have some of these pink baskets here that you may recognize and they're also in my eBay store. And I just painted two of them and then glued them together. And I just used the, color, the warm white. And then I took some remnants that I have, some ribbon, and I did some gold ribbon in the top and some pink ribbon in the bottom because the two colors in the baskets are gold and pink. And I'm guessing, or I'm just making it up, <laughs> that these are maybe for little gift baskets in the shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill those up with lots of ribbon and glue them in place. There's a plant in the window also that looks like a gold base and somewhat of a fern or something. So I already have this fern that someone else made in and then I have this oversized brass candlestick down here. And I'm just gonna glue those two items together, painted in that same antique gold, and then voila, that is ready to go for the window. Behind the shop owner rabbit, I'm gonna say, there is a shelf sitting there. And I have this wooden shelf that is broken. It also has some glue remnants on the top. I'm gonna stain it brown and then paint the shelf hooks black to give them the look maybe of metal. I took my silver Sharpie here and I just did a little outline inside that kind of gives it a metal look. And then for the top, there's a blue box sitting on top of that shelf. I don't know what it is, but I'm just gonna mimic what I'm seeing there by painting it blue and adding a little detail based on the painting. And then there is a small plant or something sitting next to it so I'm gonna go ahead and add that I already had one in a small scale to the side we don't really see the rest so I'm just gonna make it up and I'm gonna use these little jars that, uh, that you might recognize from my Mayberry Lane makeover so I had a couple extra jars and they had carrots and lavender on the front which just seemed fitting for the scene so I added those to fill in some of the gap and then on the wall, there is also a picture. It looks like a cake photo. So I'm just gonna mimic what I can see there. I don't think there's any words or anything on it, but I am gonna write those in. And then it has a gray or silverish type frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then that's what that looks like. Now on the red table, it looks like there's a doily and a glass bowl or some sort of candy dish. So I have this little glass bowl here. And then I found these little vintage pom-poms. Again, this is just one of my craft items that was in my stash already. I don't even remember where I got them. And I just glued those in so it just looks like a bowl full of little candies. So there's a little white tiered basket type of thing that's sitting next to the display and so i have a little basket here that's metal and i'm going to fill it with these little petty fours and stuff i got this also in a, in a lot so i'm just gluing them down you can see the white glue and i'm going to place those in this little white basket this white basket another item that i have in my ebay site the other foods that i have are some of these little pies and cakes and stuff and those are all of course in my collection so i'm going to glue those down to the doily and then I will glue those into that tiered stand that goes in the window because it does look like she's got some different treats and candies and goodies. Also on this tiered tray is what looks like a little flower or rose in a little tiny vase. So I have this little bead, a jewelry piece here, and this small little clay rose. So I'm gonna go ahead and super glue those items together so that I have a little rosebud vase here that I'll put on that shelf as well. Now, as far as the rest of the sweet treats for the inside of the display, display case. I'm going to go ahead and use a lot of remnants that I have left over of my polymer clay. And this is a really good way to get rid of some of those odds and end colors that you, you know, I tend to keep all that stuff and a little bit of my chocolate here too. And I'm just going to make a whole bunch of different foods. And what's really fun about this is they don't have to be super realistic because they can look more like a cartoon look. And I don't even have to be very specific on what I'm making. I'm going to try to mimic some of the things that I'm seeing in the painting, but I also added a few of these like layer cake type items and some breads and of course this is all polymer clay so I went ahead and baked it and then I'm taking my little paper doilies that I have I'm just adding a whole bunch of tacky glue and I'm just gluing them all down and once all of that is pretty dry I'm going to go ahead and add those to the display case of course there is a whole bunch of chocolate which looks like chocolate malt balls or chocolate donuts or something like that that are also in the window so I am making one tray of chocolates just for the window 
Ooh, so this is exciting. So we're getting close to being done, you guys. I did buy these rabbits online. These are Calico Critters. These are the rabbit family, and they are just too adorable. But unfortunately, their clothes are not exactly the match that I needed, and I just have to show you this little bunny tail. Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> so cute all right anyway i don't sew you guys know this i've mentioned that a couple different times but i can paint i am going to take some of my blue paint that matches the same blue that we're seeing in that little rabbit that's in front of the display case and i'm going to completely paint his entire outfit in that same color blue now this is acrylic paint that i'm using i've painted fabric sofas and chairs in the past so i know that it's going to be fine for me to paint this fabric but you have to absolutely make sure that it is absolutely 100 completely dry before you redress your dolls of course otherwise you're going to get paint on your doll and you definitely don't want to do that so just be aware of that so i'm painting the entire outfit blue on the little rabbit and then after that i'm going to paint just the bottom portion of the dress in kind of this teal color that i'm trying to color match to the taller rabbit the shop owner rabbit and i'm going to paint just the base of the dress because it looks like the top color actually works really well with the rabbit with the outfit that we're already seeing in the painting now the little blue rabbit has a red scarf on so i just cut a piece of my felt and added the white stripes with paint and then went ahead and redressed him now the shop owner rabbit is brown but i'm just gonna leave it alone because i don't want to paint this this is a flocked animal and i was a little nervous to paint acrylic paint over the flockings i just really didn't want to mess it up but i am going to add a little set of glasses to her because she is wearing those so i just have this gold set of glasses that i super glued onto her and there we go rabbits are done And so now it's finally time to put this whole room box together. So enjoy. I hope that you had a blast going down this journey with me from turning a painting into a real life miniature room box. I loved every step of it. And of course, I really loved that I was doing this for my mom and I'm excited to share with you that she just absolutely loved it. I can't believe what I just got from my daughter. Opening this was just amazing. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and click that red subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. And of course, I always love to hear from you. So feel free to put a comment below. You guys have a great rest of your week. And remember in this crazy life, it's the little things that matter. Bye.